All right, so uh, give a big hand for IR. Go for it. Hello, everyone. I hope you are all enjoying this amazing uh, conference. I sure uh, am enjoying all the amazing talks. Today, I'm going to speak to you about elegant exception handling. My name is Eyal Travelsi. I, I know it's hard to pronounce, uh, so my, uh, my Starbucks name is Jimmy. So about myself, I'm a software engineer at Salesforce. I have big passion for Python and data, and I love to share my knowledge in Medium and on Twitter. So today I'm going to speak about how we can write safe code without compromising over uh, maintainability and readability of the code. So I will show an example of a restaurant recommendation function. Uh, as you can see, we have a get restaurant recommendation function. We are extracting the configuration from a path that we are getting. Then we are extracting the user. We are uh, calculating the relevant restaurants, and then we are picking the best ones. So we can be proud of ourselves because we implemented our restaurant recommendation uh, algorithm and it's clean code and it's highly maintainable. So why should we even care about exception? The obvious answer is that errors are everywhere. everywhere. They can come from hardware and they will certainly come from your software. And it's simply unacceptable. We want our users to still be able to use our uh, program. So the first, first lesson that I'm, I, I, I think you should take is that we should want to build a fault tolerant system. So we have exceptions for that. And I'm gonna briefly cover the exception anatomy before I'm gonna show you the tricks and tips to write clean code. So exceptions as exception messages, tracebacks, and types. As you can see here, we have uh, the type of the exception, the name error, we have the descriptive message, and we have the traceback, which allows us to understand from where the exception was propagated from, from which line and from which function. I will delve a bit more on exception types. So exception types help us distinguish between different exceptions, whether it's file not found exception or uh, a syntax error when my, our code is not syntactically correct. They are hierarchical in nature. There are dozens of built-in exceptions. And if they are not enough for us, we can create our own custom exceptions. So this is not the full list of the built-in exceptions. As you can see, it's hierarchical. We have in the top of the pyramid base exceptions, and we have uh, many exceptions like syntax error and so on. You don't need to remember all of these, uh, but the, the common ones you probably should. So let's take the naive approach for exception handling. We are basically going to catch all the exceptions because we are catching base exception, which is in the top of the bin. We are then going to log it away and raise the same exact base exception. So now our code is clean and safe. But obviously, uh, there are problems lurking. Since we catch the base exceptions, we are unintentionally catching many exceptions we didn't expect. For example, most programmers want their uh, code to be at least syntactically correct. And obviously, we are catching it instead of uh, raising syntax error. In addition, uh, exceptions are not distinguishable because we raise base exception no matter what. So if I'm going to try to recover from the invoker of the function, it will be hard for me to detect whether it was uh, because of a missing file or because of a syntax issue. And unfortunately, the naive uh, code is very, very common. So we understand that the naive approach for exception handling won't be enough for us. So let's take the second uh, try. So instead of catching the base exception, we are going to catch a specific exception. We're going to catch find not found exception, 
JSON decoder row and key error. If I'm gonna catch a final found exception and JSON decoder row, I'm gonna raise the same exact error. So here I'm gonna raise final found exception and here JSON decoder row. And when I have a key error, I'm gonna uh, use a default user as a recovery mechanism. So just by doing so, uh, the invoker of this function can recover from final found exception and JSON decoder row in a different manner. So the second lesson is we should catch relevant exceptions only and that different propagated exceptions should be distinguishable. This will make our code much safer than the naive uh, approach. But can we make it a little bit uh, cleaner? And obviously the answer is yes. So in this talk, I'm not gonna cover all the type of uh, cleaning that can be done. I'm not gonna cover PEP8, object-oriented programming and so forth. But uh, let's begin uh, and I will show you some uh, useful techniques. So in our example, uh, both the final found exception and JSON decoder row are handled in the same manner, which means they can share the same exception block. In addition, instead of key row, I can use dictionary get method. And by doing this, so I'm avoiding another few lines. Lastly, I can use the else clause, which uh, occur only if no exception is being propagated. And by that, I know that the exceptions can only occur in this function. So this is a bit cleaner uh, than the previous code. Uh, and that uh, teaches us that we should use Python syntax to the fullest. But obviously our code is still not elegant. It's dominated by exception handling and the business logic is not clear. Uh, and we should really try to make it clearer in order to, for the code to be maintainable. So I don't want you uh, to give up. I really believe that error handling should not obscure our business logic and I will show you what we can do further to get there. So we should separate the business logic from the exception and code and we can do it by handling the exceptions in another layer. So I will remind you how the perfect code look like, and I will show you how we can reach something similar to it. So as you can see, we have the get restaurant recommendation function and we have the get config function. So if I want to make this part of code cleaner, the business logic, I can, I can simply uh, push the exception handling code to a different uh, place. And by that, I'm making uh, the business logic much cleaner. So obviously the recovery mechanism uh, depend on the use case. Here specifically, uh, I put it in the get config function. And if I want to make it a bit further clean, I can make the get config to a get user function doing doing something like this. So obviously this is much cleaner without compromising on the safety of the code. So we should really try to pick the right abstraction level to handle the exceptions. But are we completely safe? We have uh, some exception handling code and the code is quite clean. Obviously, we are still not completely safe because we have silent errors. And silent errors are errors that do not crash our code, but they do deliver incorrect results, which make them harder to detect and make them much worse. So the question is, how can we detect those errors? And the answer is simply by using validations. We have many types of validations that we can check. We have output and input type and values. We have preconditions and postconditions, side effects and invariants. And when we find an issue with uh, the code, when uh, we validate and fail, 
we should simply fail fast so we won't find the, the issue later on. So I'm gonna brief, briefly cover uh, some techniques for validations. We can use vanilla exceptions, we can use type ends, and we can use contract testing libraries. Obviously, the, the best uh, solution is to combine all of these uh, depending on the use case. So vanilla exceptions, we look something as follows. Uh, we have our function and we are adding an if clause uh, that validates the type of the input and the type of the output and raise a type error if the error occur. And in addition, I could have checked if it's a valid S3 path and by that uh, raising a value error. So obviously we can validate everything with vanilla exceptions. Those validation will occur only on runtime and not on compile time. And unfortunately, it's not the cleanest code. So I'm gonna briefly speak why I didn't use assertion ears here, uh, because it would save me a one-liner. Uh, and basically because it raises the wrong exception type. No matter what the issue is, we're gonna raise an assertion error uh, which will make our life much harder to recover. So it will be hard for me to understand if the issue was a type error or a value error, for example. Another small issue is that they can be compiled away. The second technique is type ends. So this is an example for the same code. As you can see, simply uh, I can add type ends, which tells which type the input and which type the output is. Uh, and just by doing that, we can validate the input and output type, but we can do other validations. We can check it both on compile time using NumPy, uh, MyPy, uh, and on runtime using this decorator, the type checked of type card uh, library. And this is quite elegant. Another uh, technique is contract testing the libraries. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty similar to uh, the previous slide. I can validate if it's a valid S3 path just by using this decorator. So obviously all the validations are supported. Uh, they occur only on runtime and not compile time. Uh, it's clean and elegant, but unfortunately, uh, to my knowledge, there is no mature and maintained option for contracts testing library. So you should be re really careful when we you pick uh, your own uh, solution. But there are still problems lurking around. Even for a simple function like the get relevant restaurant, which basically a get request to an imaginary uh, URL, uh, there are a lot of uh, exceptions that can occur. So our, our app might live in an unstable environment. And by that, I mean that my network can be down, the server network can be down, the server can be too busy, and many more issues. So one technique to make our code more resilient to flaky environment is to do a retry mechanism. So here is a naive, uh, uh, naive implementation of retry mechanism. Uh, simply, I'm going to iterate five times on the same uh, request. And if I'm getting an exception that is uh, corresponding to a flaky environment, I'm going to retry unless I reach the maximum allowed uh, retries. So obviously, this is much safer, again, but it's not clean and it's obscure our logic. So there must be a better way. And obviously there is. So Python has a lot of uh, patterns that are uh, really common. We have decorators and we have context managers. I'm not gonna uh, cover them uh, too much because it deserves its own uh, talk. But obviously uh, the most common use cases are already implemented in the standard library or in other third party uh, libraries. So in our example, we can use the tenacity library to do a retry mechanism. And by just uh, using a 
external library, we, we are reducing the amount of bugs and we are getting more features. As you can see, this is much cleaner. So we should use patterns for better code reuse. So what I'm gonna speak about next. So I'm gonna delve a little bit more into exception uh, types. As a reminder, exception types help us distinguish between different exceptions. They help us emphasize our intent and we have both built-ins and custom exceptions. So I'm gonna speak about when we should use custom exceptions or built-in exceptions. So, uh, so in my point of view, and it's very controversial uh, topic, the entire slide is, is that we should use default exceptions by default because they are familiar, they are well-documented, we can do some stack overflow magic with them. But obviously we have custom exceptions for a reason. And the reason is that sometimes uh, built-in exceptions does not suffice. And these are the cases. When there is no built-in exceptions that emphasize our intent, for example, if I want to emphasize that the, I have a configuration file and it's, it's malformed, I might create a malformed uh, exception type as opposed to use some uh, value error. In addition, if I want to distinguish between dif different exceptions, for example, if I want to recover differently from a value error that is too big and too small, I might create uh, a new exception type. And when I want to uh, group together, together different exceptions to make uh, recovery easier. So I can use multiple inheritance uh, to make the recovery much cleaner. And lastly, when, when I'm gonna wrap a third party APIs and I'm gonna show it in the next slide. So when we are wrapping third party APIs, we want to minimize our dependency. I'm gonna show you an example uh, here. So let's say I have the get relevant restaurant function which can raise request read timeout. If I want to recover from this uh, function, this means I need to do import of request in this function. So, uh, so in this case, I know in this function, which implementation uh, was used in the get relevant restaurant. And if uh, in some case, uh, the get relevant restaurant will change the implementation, I will need to change my code as well, which is obviously bad. Another cool uh, thing about exception that it has cause. So the exception cause indicates the reason of the exception, and we can override it to replace the exception that is being raised. I will show it, it will be much easier to understand. So let's say we have uh, a zero division and I'm doing some uh, amazing recovery mechanism and I'm failing. So by doing so, I can raise the zero uh, division error, but let's say I wanna uh, emphasize that uh, my recovery mechanism actually failed. So I can do something as follow. And as you can see, I will have the two tracebacks and two exceptions here. If on the other hand, I just want to show uh, that my amazing recovery mechanism failed, I can do something as follow. And as you can see, uh, I'm, I'm raising the exception. Obviously, uh, raising exception uh, as uh, like this is a bad practice, uh, and you should pick uh, or create your own custom uh, exception in this case. So we should really strive to pick the right exception type and message to emphasize our intent and to help us recover. A small thing about uh, sensitive information. So our exceptions gonna be spread far and wide. It's gonna be in the logging, uh, logging system, in the monitoring system, in the incident system, and even on Slack. So we should be really careful when we are uh, handling personal data uh, due to uh, many reasons like compliance. 
And we should never reveal our own uh, weaknesses because there are bad actors everywhere. So you could never be too careful. A funny example for that is that if I'm gonna do a login and I'm failing because of a too common password, I don't expect anyone to write uh, the password in the exception message. There are some common gotchas for exception handling in uh, Python that I'm gonna cover. So exceptions as a block order. And by that I mean that uh, when, when an exception is being raised, it's gonna try to match the exception type from top to bottom. By the way, value error is both exception and a value error. So in this uh, specific example, we would expect to get a value, a value error because it's the most specific exception. But obviously we are getting an exception. So we should write the exception uh, exceptions from the most specific ones to the more generic ones. Another uh, common catches is the not implemented and not implemented error. So not implemented error is a valid uh, Python exception and not implemented is simply a constant in Python. What, so when we are raising uh, a not implemented uh, constant, it tells us that it's a type error because we are trying to uh, raise something that is not an exception. It tells us that we should uh, raise something that derives from base exception. As we said, it's in the top of the pyramid. Another culture is return in the finally block. So let's say we have the this try uh, block, we have some exception handling and we're returning. So when we see the return, we think we don't need to read further the function, but obviously we are getting the surprising result. So finally uh, occur no matter what in the try accept block. So you should be really careful when you are returning from the finally, uh, if we would, would have uh, a return block, it, would, it will uh, work in the manner that we thought. Uh, and that's about uh, exception and link catches. But this sounds like a lot of work. Should I do all of these, no matter uh, what type of application do I have? So obviously not all programs are made equal. We have some uh, programs that need to be extremely reliable, like airplanes and electricity factories. We have uh, systems that we want to be highly reliable, like our driveless cars. We have reliable systems, dodgy systems, and basically crap. So for, for the first lessons that we learned, we want to build a fault tolerant system to a certain degree, depending on the use case. So let's uh, remind ourselves the lessons. Uh, we want to build a fault tolerance system to a certain degree. We should catch relevant exceptions only. We should uh, make different exception distinguishable. We should use Python syntax to the fullest. Error handling should not obscure our business logic. We should pick the right abstraction level for handling our exceptions. We should validate and fail fast. We should use patterns for better code reuse. We should pick the right uh, exception types and messages to emphasize our intent and to help us to recover from it. We should not use sensitive information. Uh, and there are some exception and link uh, gotchas. So there are some topics that I didn't cover. Uh, error codes and when we should use error codes as opposed to exceptions, uh, the functional approach for exception handling and its benefits, how we, how we can avoid some uh, error using domain-driven designs, and architectural patterns for resiliency. So feel free to ask any questions now or later, uh, and I hope you enjoy the rest of uh, the amazing talks in this amazing conference.
Thank you. Thank you for the talk. All right, so we, we got a question here. Um, when you, you recommended earlier to use the built-in exceptions when possible, and, and so like, what are the advantages of using one of the customer, uh, one of the custom exceptions instead of one of our specific ones? So I briefly covered it. Uh, obviously, uh, if I want to recover, I will give you an example. So let's say uh, I am an account manager and, and I can only work on companies that are between 100 and 200 people. So if it's uh, bigger, I might move it to uh, a different team. And if it's smaller, I might just, I might just ignore uh, this uh, customer. So basically, if I want to uh, distinguish between different exceptions, this is one reason that I would pick uh, to, to, cast, to create a custom, uh, a custom exception. Another one is the uh, third party APIs that I showed. And lastly, if I want to emphasize my intent. So uh, if I want to emphasize that uh, the, my config file is malformed. Uh, I can't use uh, any of the built-in exception because it's very specific. Right, cool, thank you. Um, is the iContract package reliable for production? John asks. Um, so probably not. What I do specifically is just uh, to write my own decorator uh, because uh, the eye contract is not, it's not very stable and mature, unfortunately. Uh, if any one of you know about a uh, contract testing library that is uh, more mature and uh, more stable, please share it with me. Uh, but as I, as I said, it's pretty easy uh, to just write uh, this specific decorator uh, and just simply use it. All right, thank you very much. Um, that, those are all the questions that we have. Amazing. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much.